Hello everyone and welcome to Artha Point CUT MA English Preparation. Today we would be starting a very important lecture series that would cover about 40% of your CUT MA English exam and that is the history of English literature. Now in the coming lecture series we would be covering all the periods that are there Hello everyone from and welcome to Artha Point the CUT MA English preparation. Today, we would be starting a very important lecture series that would cover about 40% of your... So, we would be covering each and every era one by one. That is, beginning from the Anglo-Saxon era and slowly and steadily, we would be moving to the post-modern era. During this lecture series, we would be covering all the important works that are there, all the important authors that are there, and the events that took place in each and every era. I would request you all to maintain a notebook and keep on writing down your notes so that you can refer to it because we would be just covering not just the critical authors, the critical works, but also the history of a particular era. Right. Without any further ado, let us begin with the very first era that marked the history of English literature, that is the Anglo-Saxon period. Now, before moving to who were the critical writers in the Anglo-Saxon period or how did even literature came into being, what is important for us is to know how did the Anglo-Saxon period began? Who were the people who actually came in, who settled down and began this whole literature era, right? Now, one thing that you need to know is that the Anglo-Saxon period was a period of 410 to 1066 AD. The question comes, is the Britain that we know today actually what it was it is today was it essentially what it was or were there any changes that took place talking of the fifth century ad the natives of what is today called britain were called the brythons right this was a period of massive invasions And it was during this time that three Germanic tribes that were the Angles, the Saxons and the Jews that invaded the land of the Brythons and they took over. Now, Angles, Saxons and the Jews were together called the Anglo-Saxon people. Right. So, Angles were a dominant tribe. They formed what is, what was known as the Angle land, which today is called England. Right. So it was during the 5th century that they conquered Britain and they settled down there. They drove all the native people that were basically the Brythons to the deep mountains of Wales and Scotland. And then they divided the whole land into three parts. I told you that Angle settled and they formed what, what is today called England. They settled in the kingdom of East Angles. Saxon took the part, the southern part of the island and they formed small kingdoms such as Sussex, Wessex and Essex. And Jews were a minority and they were given the southern east corner of the island. England came into being in the 7th century. So 5th century the invasions began. 7th century, England came into being. Right. So, Anglo-Saxons, that are the Angles, the Saxons and the Jews are known to be the first Englishmen. And the language that they spoke is what is called the Old English. And this was what formed the foundation of what we know, uh, know as the Old English literature and language. So, you, there was a past year question wherein you were asked 
who were the first Englishmen. So you should remember that it was the Angles, Saxons, and the Jews, along with a few Britons, who were, formed this community of Anglo-Saxons. Right. The next question comes is to what is Old English? So as I just told you that the language of these native tribes, the language of Ang Ang that Angles, Saxons, and the Jews brought to Britain and that of the Brythons is what is called the Old English. Right. Now, another thing for you to know is that this is also known as a dark age. Why is it called the dark age? Because this was a period of massive invasions, as I told you. And one such was the Viking invasion. Right. Now, Viking were extremely disastrous people and their invasion led to hundreds and thousands of killing and therefore there was no time for literature amongst people there were no scientific advancements no literature advancements so one reason why is it called the dark age because of the invasions and second was that there was no printing press at the time right Therefore, the complete literature was in oral form, right? And it was after centuries that this oral literature was written down. It was written into in the form of manuscripts and it was given a long composition. It was somewhere around the 8th century that eventually the Anglo-Saxon prose came into being, right? And still, one thing, one major thing to note about this period is that still the origin of the poetry of this period or the origin of the prose of this period is still unknown because it was in oral form and therefore it moved in a form of word of mouth and passed on from centuries to centuries, right? However, when we talk of the Anglo-Saxon period, there are a few important works that you must know and there are a few important writers that you must know. So let us move on. Now, when we speak of the Anglo-Saxon literature, the Anglo-Saxon literature is divided into majorly into two categories. One is what is called the pagan poetry and second is what is called the religious poetry. Right. Now, what is pagan poetry? So pagan poetry or the whole paganism, it was brought by the Anglo-Saxons. And this form of poetry spoke only of heroism. It spoke, it was inspired from the, the forefathers of Anglo-Saxons. And it only spoke of how uh, the kings were fighting uh, the monsters, how... Uh, Conquerors uh, took uh, how conquerors were taking over, and it was about strength. It was about loyalty, right? So this particular uh, pagan poetry is represented by one of the most famous work of the time, which is called Beowulf. We would be discussing Beowulf in a couple of minutes ahead. And second was the religious poetry. Religious poetry predominantly was about their love for Christ. And this was represented in the work of Cadman and Sinbo, right? Now, when we talk of the pagan poetry, again, it was in the oral form. And it was after centuries that it was converted into manuscripts by Christian monks. So essentially, it did not have any Christian point of view. But when these Christian monk, monks were writing down these poetries and converting them into manuscripts, they gave it a little Christian clip. They gave it a little religious clip. A few of the important work of the pagan, in the form of pagan poetry that we have in the Anglo-Saxon period is, of course, Beowulf. We have Vidsith. We have Walder, 
we have the fight at Finsburg. And we also have the battle of Brunaburg. Right, so these were some of the important works. However, if you know about Beowulf, uh, the major questions when we talk of the Anglo-Saxon period would come from Beowulf. Therefore, that is one of the most critical work that you should know about. Now, let us discuss about this famous work, Beowulf. The very first thing to know about it is that the origin and the writer still remains unknown, right? Now, Beowulf is the oldest poem in the English language. It is the oldest surviving epic in English language. So this becomes of significance because you could be in, uh, you could, uh, in the CUT examination, they could ask you directly, which was which is the oldest surviving epic. So you should know about Beowulf, right? Now, it consists of more than 3,000 lines. And Beowulf is a type of Homeric hero. Now, what is a Homeric hero? The question comes. So, a Homeric hero is usually someone who is considered to be above a normal human being. The traits of the particular epic hero are strength, loyalty, courage, and intelligence. And a Homeric hero is a complete representation of what we see in the Iliad, that we see Achilles in Iliad and we see Odysseus in the Odyssey. So this particular hero that we have here, known as Bivol, is also a representation of what we find in Achilles, uh, what we find that of Achilles in Iliad and Odysseus in the Odyssey, right? Also one thing, when this particular poetry was composed, there was no name given to it. Right. But the hero of the poetry or the epic was Beowulf, and therefore they gave the title to be Beowulf. Now, let us discuss about the poetry. Let me quickly summarize it to you what the epic is all about. So, the epic begins with Rodgar the king of Danes, who had built a med hall and a beautiful med hall in his kingdom, where he would usually go with his kinsmen and enjoy a hefty meal. He would sing along, they would dance along at night. Initially, there was a lot of cheer, a lot of gleefulness in his kingdom. But slowly and steadily, there were a series of miseries that fell upon his kingdom. And it was then the monster of the epic, that is Grendel, appeared. Grendel is extremely monstrous, who killed the sleeping kingsmen and slowly and steadily started creating havoc in the kingdom. And it was for 12 years that Grendel did the same to the kingdom of Rodgar. After knowing the condition of Rodgar's kingdom, it was Bibul who was the nephew of Hylag, the king of Gates, who lived in Jutland, he decided that he would go and help his uncle, Rodgar, and save his kingdom. So Beowulf, along with his kinsmen, he went, he fought, he ripped the arm of Grendel, and eventually, in the battle, Grendel died. The next thing that came up was Grendel's mother who wanted to avenge the death of his son. And therefore, she came and then Beowulf had a war with Grendel's mother. And again, Beowulf rose as a winner and Grendel's mother died. Right. Beowulf was then named as the king and he reigned for a period of 50 years. Again, he was extremely respected by his people. He was loved by his people, but in his span of his kingdom, when Beowulf was slowly and steadily becoming a little old, there was a fire monster who came to his kingdom who thought that his golden cup 
that he was securing for say a period of 300 years was stolen by the wolf kingdom and therefore he start it started creating a series of murderous events in his kingdom and eventually we will fought the monster uh, he rose as a winner but he was severely injured and eventually we will fell the epic ends with a beautiful funeral and that is what this epic is all about so this is what we will is all about so you must know who we will was who the monster grendel was and what was the king of the mob rodder like and this is the whole summary of the epic right now why the epic is of the anglo saxon era it was extremely beautifully composed and therefore we must know certain writing features of the poet the very first feature that we have here is that as i told you that the pagan poetry was not of the christian flavor but when the christian monks started jotting it down they added a little christian flavor to the poem right so it was basically a product of the advanced pagan civilization and the whole poem presents to us a all rounder tribal society a complete picture of the tribals of that era so it gives us a complete picture of the primitive society of europe so number one feature is that it gives us a complete insight into the primitive society right now second good feature about the poetry is that each line is divided into two halves and each half have two heavy stresses right so there's a strong use of stresses in the epic the third feature that i would like to talk about is the use of alliteration so it is a is is again an extremely notable feature of the poem so three syllables are stressed of each line and a, and they are arranged in form of alliteration right and fourth so third is use of alliteration and fourth is use of metaphors so there are a lot of metaphors and understatements that are used in the poem for example god is called wonder wielder monster is referred to as soul destroyer the human body is referred to as the bone house and you would have here as the sea is called the whale road or the swan road the soldiers are called the sea the shieldmen so you see that even when we this was an era of old english it was so evolved and it gave us a foundation of what we use today so alliterations metaphors in an era when it was just beginning right now let us move on to the next type of poetry that was there and that was the religious poetry this is religious when we talk of religious poetry cadmon should be the first author that should come to your mind right he was the first known religious poet of england and he was also called the father of english song so this is extremely important therefore four stars because you could be you could be asked directly in your cet examination who is the father of english song so you should know that it was cadmon now his life story was vividly described in bidis so bide was again a prose writer in the anglo saxon period so he, it was bide who in his book historias essexletica described the life story of bide of cadmon sorry now cadmon was an extremely humble and unlearned man and he looked after his cattle right so one night on new year's eve there was a heavy feast going on and songs were called upon it was during this period that uh, during this specific night when cadmon felt extremely ashamed and he thought that because he was 
unknown and he would not be able to contribute much to the society and therefore extremely ashamed he move on to his cattle shed as he slept in his cattle shed he heard some voice in his sleep and it was this voice that encouraged him to sing he first he had a little debate when he said that no i cannot sing the voice said that you can sing to me and it was during this time that cadmin sang a song which became the very first poem that he wrote which is called the hymn of praise cadmin was extremely excited he was encouraged by the success of his first poem and then he composed many other poems by using the biblical method so you should know that he is known as the father of english songs and the second thing that you should know is about the hymn of the praise this was his first poetry moving on next poet that we have here is sinwul now sinwul most of his poetry is on uh, i mean the major focus of his poetry was on christ and his love for christ and reverence for virgin mary right so sinwul lived in the early 9th century so you see we till now we began with 5th century when the anglo saxons came then came the 7th century when england came into being and in the 9th century beowulf came into being writers such as cadmin came into being sinwulf came into being right so from 5th to 9th so he was one of the greatest anglo saxon poets and he produced four poems christ juliana the fates of apostles and elin right so that is all that you have to know about the poetry of the time now we would again a very important part of the anglo saxon era is the prose right so what is a prose let us first discuss a little about that so prose is a style it is a little different from it is part of the poetry but a little different so it is a style that does not follow any structure of rhyming or metre right so prose follows the grammatical structure using words to compose phrases that are arranged into a sentence and paragraphs so prose is basically used to spread information amongst people right and it follows a naturally verbal it, it is and story it is in form of stories for the reader right now three of the most famous prose writers of the time that you should literally know about first is venerable bede second is alfred the great and third is alfric now when we talk of venerable bede and when we talk of old english prose this should be the first name that should come to your mind he was first scholar in english literature and was regarded as the father of english learning right so when we go here cadmin was called the father of english songs and venerable bede was called the father of english learnings right so he has written about 40 works and they were exclusively written in latin right now the most important work that we already discussed that also covers cadmin's life history is the history of english people right so you should know about his work so this book not only tells us how religion was introduced and it's how it spread in england but also recounts the historical events of the period right so also you should know that cadmin's legendary life story was described by bede second comes alfred the great now alfred the great was king of the wessex kingdom again a very important part of the prose writing in, in the old english literature during his reign he tried to impart as much and 
helped as much in the field of education as he could. He introduced colleges. He introduced. He brought professors to England, right? And he was a well-known translator. So he translated some of the most important Latin works into English, among which was the most important work called the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. So again, the most important work when we talk of Alfred the Great was the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. And third was Alfred. Alfred was a clergyman, right? He wrote a number of religious work in Greek and Latin. However, his work were all in a lighter tone. They were lighter, clearer, and more musical prose, right? So, when we speak of the Anglo-Saxon era, we should know about the history. That is, who were the Angles, the Saxons, and Jews. Second, when we come into the works, we should know about Beowulf. We should know about Cadman and his time. We should know about Sinwul. We should know about prose writer. The prose writer that were Alfred. So we just discussed with that were Alfred, Alfred the Great, and Venerable Bede. Right? Uh, also, we should know the parts. Number one was the pagan poetry, and second is the religious poetry. This sums up the complete Anglo Saxon era. Right? So, this is what the Anglo-Saxon era composed of. Now, we would be discussing certain past year questions that are based on the Anglo-Saxon period. Let us know. So, I hope that all that we have discussed till now is quite clear. If you have any questions, you could definitely put down in the comment sections below. The very first question that we have here is, Anglo-Saxon conquest happened in which year? Very easy question. We know 9th century Beowulf came into being. So we know that Anglo-Saxons definitely have arrived. They have brought our Old English uh, into Britain. 7th century we know England came into being. And we know 5th century was when the invasion took place. So the correct answer is 5th century. Next question that we have here is, the first Englishmen are, so who were the first Englishmen? They were the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews, who together were called Anglo-Saxons. So the correct answer is Anglo-Saxons. The next question that we have here is, the history of English literature began with. So the history of English literature, it began with, obviously it's not the anglo normal conquest. It is not the appearance of people. It was the Anglo-Saxon settlement in Britain that began the history of English literature. Right. Dash is the most important specimen of English literature. So the most important specimen that formed the foundation of old English literature is Beowulf because it was the first work that appeared. Right? We know after Beowulf came the Haim of Praise by Cadman and then came Historia Explicitica by Betty, right? The last question that we have here is the main stories of Beowulf are based on the folk legends of. So we know that Beowulf tells us a story of the primitive northern tribes. It 
described it was a pagan poetry so it described the poor fathers of anglo saxons the tribes of the period so the correct answer is the primitive northern tribes obviously it cannot be the bible because this was not a religious poetry it cannot be the anglo saxons but the history of the anglo saxons right with this we end today's session with this we come to an end of the anglo saxon period i hope that i the series have helped you with the first era that is the old english period if you have any further questions you can ask us in the comment section below and for more information you can call us at 8368663950 thank you so much i would be back with the next era and we would be discussing the medieval age of the english literature thank you take care